All right. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Can you introduce yourself to our audience and let us know sure. what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So my name is Pamela Ghanem, and I'm the head of the Atheist Republic Arabic Division. And um, so I have YouTube videos. I'm also an activist on Twitter, or I used to be before they closed all of my accounts. Mm. Um, also on Facebook, they closed my accounts, but I still consider myself as an activist because I continue on Instagram and I continue on my personal page on Facebook to talk about important issues, issues that I care about. And um, that's it. I'm hoping to get my accounts back. Uh, I'm hoping that Twitter will come back to its senses, but I don't see that very soon. Okay, and you are from, uh, you, you were born in? I was born in Lebanon, Lebanon. born and raised, and uh, I'm here to talk about what's going on in Lebanon, the actual mm -hmm. revolution that's going on, which is great, right. and uh, it's happening so fast, it's happening every day, right. so yeah. And um, and you have when you say you're an activist, uh, you have two. Uh, what I notice is that you have three branches of activism. One of them, uh, one of your activism is atheism related. The other um, activism that you do is women rights and gay rights activism. Yes. And a third, I, I think you also do mid uh, Lebanon political related activism as well. That is so, true. So. I also write article on Rasif 22 and it's a very uh, progressive liberal um, uh, outlet where you can uh, write um, whatever you like. There's no uh, limit. I can express myself. I write articles in Arabic and in English. Mm. Um, I talk about women issues in the Middle East, atheism, uh, anti religious movement and all of that so I'm also uh, a journalist in that sense right and what's a uh, uh, by the way for people that speak Arabic what's the name of the Atheist Republic Arabic channel for the people that want to go it's, uh, so it's Jumhuriyat Al Ilhad and right. it's on YouTube and on Facebook you can find us there right. uh, so yeah fantastic okay so what's happening in Lebanon all right, I don't know where to start. I'm very excited <laughs> because we've been waiting for this um, at practically like all my life. I'm in my 30s and since the day I was born, I remember us fighting. Uh, we have a lot of sects as like everyone knows. We have um, religions fighting over who is more powerful, who gets more chairs, who can rule, uh, and uh, now what we're seeing now is a revolution. The government tries to say that it's a movement, but it's not a movement. It's a revolution because it's going on in the whole country. Um, they're getting together, people from different religions, non-religious people, all in the streets. They're fighting the same fight. They want the same thing. Uh, and actually, they achieved something. Uh, the government resigned. The prime minister resigned. Uh, but we want more. Uh, mm -hmm. The people is demanding uh, the resignation of the president, uh, the parliament. We want a new government, a government uh, that is um, formed with uh, experts and not politicians. We don't want politicians anymore. We tried those uh, warlords, uh, people who divided our country for years and years mm. into religious sects. Uh, people are fed up with this. They are, I think, even religious people, you see them on the street, they're demanding a secular Lebanon, which is yeah. awesome. It never happened before. Like you see women wearing veils and wearing hijab, basically, and they're saying, oh, we tried your religious ruling and we don't want that anymore. Uh, women are on the streets demanding equal rights. Uh, so what's going on is revolutionary. It's not a movement. It's an actual revolution. Right. So what is it exactly that the, pro I mean, it's not, it's hard to say what exactly, what protesters want. Well, but what do, what, yeah. Yeah, what do they mostly say they want? Okay. So first, um, we have a corrupt 
government. Mm. Uh, and this government, even if it resigned, it doesn't mean that the corruption is over. So the corruption is in the inst in all institutions, even religious institutions. It's in the parliament. We want them to resign. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, we see politicians who spend millions of dollars on their sons and daughters' weddings. And I mean, they're supposed to be working for us. You know, mm -hmm. they're employees. How can they have so much money? It doesn't make any sense. They didn't inherit this money. They did not start as billionaires. And all of a sudden, they became like ministers and uh, like they joined the parliament and they're now billionaires. Mm -hmm. So they are stealing from the people. So what the people is saying that we want our money back. We want our rights back. We want electricity. We want clean water. We want streets we can walk on. Uh, we want, you know, you, we want to be um, like, we don't want to be a third world country anymore. Um, we want what everybody has. It's right. our right. So, um, I mean, a lot of times atheists, uh, atheist activists exaggerate how big of a request secularism is right. among all the demands that protesters have. But I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, with, with Lebanon, this is not an exaggeration because when they when the protesters are protesters are asking an, an end to sectarianism, the sects in Lebanon are all based on religion, right? That's so you true. have the prime minister that is Sunni, has to be Sunni. Has you to. have a yeah, a, a president that has to be Christian and yes. the and the head of the parliament that has to be Shia. And the, in the parliament itself, all the seats are divided based on sects, and those sects are mostly uh, re based on religion. So when people are asking for an, and, it, 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 and it, correct me if I'm wrong, the sectarianism is the main thing that the people, the protesters are seeing the source of all their problems. Is that true? That is true. Even yeah. religious people, like they're saying, we want to keep our religion. Uh, right. We are religious, we're not going to, you know, but we're demanding a secular state, which mm. means separating religion from the government. They want to remove religion from the institutions because it's everywhere. Mm. It's in everything. And women, like mostly women, they're on the streets demanding equal rights when it comes to um, giving a citizenship. To their uh, kids because uh, Lebanese women cannot they're not allowed to do that so if you are born if your mom is Lebanese she cannot give you the citizenship which, which doesn't make any sense mm. um, uh, demanding like uh, laws uh, concerning divorce and marriage because it's all church or church related or uh, if it's like uh, it depends if you're Christian or you're Muslim um, you go to a religious court to get married or to get divorced and so women are demanding also uh, for change because they cannot be treated equally if this continues right and um just to be clear like when it comes to the shia influence part yes um of the parliament um it's it's the, the shia party that is the most powerful one in, in yes. lebanon is hezbollah yes. which is a uh, proxy of Iran's government. That's true. Uh, do, are the protesters also asking for uh, a reduction of Iran's influence in Lebanon's politics? Iran's government. I, I should I should not yes. say, in whenever, by the way, whenever I say Iran without saying Iran's government, some people right. from Iran get upset. So I have to say yes. Iran's government, but go ahead. That's so. true. Yeah. Um, actually, this is where it gets complicated because Hezbollah, uh, of course, and um, they are the only party in Lebanon they, that has like guns and they yeah. are organized. They're a militia. They're like, a, they are an army mm. inside this country. So we have the Lebanese army and we have Hezbollah. So a lot of people on the street demanding also um, the Shia to pick a side are you with us? Are you Lebanese? Are you uh, with the revolution? Do you want to change everything? You Do you want better lives? Do you want electricity? Do you want cleaner water? Do you want free education? Yes or no? Because, you know, Hezbollah is in the government. Mm. So the Shia now are in a, like a tricky position because some of them, they want 
I mean, most of them, like they're human beings, they're Lebanese people, they want these things, but they can't say no to their political party because they are, um, I don't know how to say it, like they- Tribal. Um, yes, 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 yes. And they can't let go. It's very, very hard for them to let go. The Sunnah are, are really uh, a step ahead because, you know, of the Saudi uh, influence. And now you see like it's non-existent anymore. Mm. Uh, they got rid of it somehow. And they're in the streets with the Christians, with the Druze, with everybody else. But the Shia are still, you know, they, they can't let go. Well, well, because I think Iran has been, Iran's government has been much, much better at um, increasing its, it was more strategic at increasing its influence in, in other countries. Like I think Saudi Arabia just sucks at geopolitics, right? So Saudi, Ar- <laughs> Saudi Arabia tried to compete with Iran, Iran's government, Saudi, Saudi's government tried to compete with Iran's government in Lebanon using yes. Hariri and other people, just like they try to compete with Iran's government in other places, but they keep failing because I don't, I think they're just, they're not very good at it. Uh, but I don't, so, but it's, it's just, unfortunately, this is not the only place where Iran's government has been successful to mm-hmm. use the Shia ideology to control the country. Uh, I mean, I see when I, when I look at uh, pictures from Lebanon, I see girls without hijab with makeup and everything, and they're holding like Nasrullah's picture, like the Hezbollah leader's pictures and celebrating. And like, you're not even wearing hijab. Why are you celebrating yes. the Hezbollah? Like, I don't understand how. Let me tell you why. why? Because uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, they are like, they're super smart. Mm. Uh, they knew how to play uh, the Christians in Lebanon mm. um, because they are pro uh, president. President Aoun, who is a Christian, and they support him. Uh, they pretend to be uh, like, th- we are going to defend you. We're not here only to defend Shia. We're going to defend you against uh, ISIS, against mm. Daesh. Against okay, the Sunnis, so, basically. Yes, against the Sunnis. Right. So uh, some Christians who are pro-president, uh, they believe that. They bought that. So you see them on the streets. And when a Hezbollah person sees someone like wearing short skirts and holding the sign, they actually are super happy Mm. because they, you know, they want they know that those people are kuffar. You know, they're going to hell and we don't, you know, uh, we don't want to associate with them, but let them do this so that the world would see that we are open minded and we care about everybody. And it's not only about us. And that's how they include their own agenda uh, under the table. They're super smart. The Sunnah are not that smart. Yeah, then, uh, well, yeah, I mean, the Saudi yeah. government. But here's the interesting thing is that the, the uh, Hezbollah Shia masters in, in, back in Tehran, they're arresting uh, women and girls for yeah. taking off their hijab, giving them seven year prison sentences. Yeah. But back, but the same people in Lebanon, their proxies in Lebanon, are giving uh, women without hijab, here, hold a sign and celebrate Hezbollah. I mean, <laughs> and- we talked about this in all of our videos. This is hypocrisy. This is religious hypocrisy. This is what let me, uh, what made me leave religion in general. When I see hypocrisy everywhere, people who are bipolar, basically, and, you know, they don't, I mean, this is, I can't even, talk, you know me, I'm very emotional when it comes to religious hypocrisy. Um, and people buy it. A lot of people, they believe it because they're scared of ISIS. They, they're they scared of the uh, Saudi influence and all the, basically, the uh, um, terrorists who mm. are surrounding us all over. So what um, Hezbollah says that we are going to defend you. We are going to protect you from them. So how did Hez- how come in the last election, when was this? Hezbollah got a lot more seats. Like people voted for yeah. Hezbollah, right? Okay. But- because yeah. they um, they were uh, how do you say uh, with the president, so yeah. people who voted for the president, like he has a big party in Lebanon, mm. so they worked with Hezbollah, uh, and now together they have uh, most of the seats right, because right. they knew how to play the Christians. 
Christians. So most Christians uh, were pro Hezbollah in the elections. Mm. I, I, well, let me tell you something back uh, in Iran, how the government is using the Christians in Lebanon as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, what, what Iran's government is trying to do is try to build a Shia empire, like the Shia crescent all around the Middle East, going from Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, mm -hmm. Yemen, right? Bahrain. Uh, but a lot of people are like, oh, you're using Shia ideology to spread your empire. And Iran's government keeps pointing at Lebanon and we're like, what if it was because of Shiism? Why do Christians in Lebanon support us? Huh? So the, the, the support of Christians in Lebanon for uh, Hezbollah yes. is used as a way to say, like, look, we're not just using our Shia ideology to spread. So they're using yeah. outside of Iran, outside of Lebanon as well. That's true. That's absolutely true. I mean, and in Lebanon, every, all the uh, the Christians who are in the parliament, they benefited from Hezbollah's influence because hmm. oh. they are here because of them. Because, you know, the Shia in Lebanon are like, a, it's a huge community. Hmm. So uh, they can, you know, um, whenever Hezbollah says you have to elect these people, it's like almost automatically they go sign their names on a piece of paper and that they don't even read the names they don't care as long as it says hezbollah says go vote for these people that's what they're gonna do but so how also do they the benefit? Christians, yeah because those uh the shia actually help elect those christians officials they help elect you know the uh um the parliament um, some people, so they work together under the table, even if they hate each other, for political gain. So how is this a revolution if the if the there's mixed opinions? This seems like a lot of people want an end to sectarianism, right. but there does seem to be some people that st are still backing Hezbollah. I mean. Hezbollah's popularity has gone up. They got more seats, so it's not it, the protest. The, the protesters represent most of the country, some of the country, a majority, uh, a minority. Like we, we people like uh, might tell us, why are you only paying attention to protesters? Look at the other right. side. Hezbollah is becoming more and more popular. Okay, now Hezbollah is not becoming more and more popular. Mm -hmm. It's uh, on the contrary, because mm -hmm. of the revolution, people are starting to you know, open their eyes. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, this revolution is very simple. It's not political. People want rights. They want uh, to be treated like human beings. They want, like I said, basic stuff like electricity, uh, like um, get rid of corruption. Uh, they want their money back. Uh, they want a good economy. They want good roads. They want good education. So this revolution is different because it's from the people for the people. And it's not about politics anymore. Uh, maybe some political parties are trying to, uh, you know, benefit from it. And it's fine because it happens when there's a big movement, when there are revolutions, political parties try to benefit from it. But the people in Lebanon are trying, you know, to say, no, you're not allowed in here. This is us. We don't want you anymore. We tried you for like 30 years and you did nothing for us. So we are hoping as Lebanese people to draw all the Shia towards us mm. and to say, you know what? You're part of us. You're Lebanese. Just start, you know, we are anti this government, anti-corruption. You are too. You want these rights too. So this revolution is very simple. It's about the people. It's not about the politicians. Okay, so this is why the protest continued even after Hariri stepped down. Yes. So the the Sunni Prime Minister um, Hariri stepped down, um, yes. but and then people are the politicians, the president, and everyone else deciding like, okay, how do we pick someone else? And the people are like, wait, you you probably you didn't hear us, did you? Yeah. We don't want you to pick the no. next prime minister. Like you guys, we don't want you guys to just move like this person here, and then you guys are are yeah. still the person that just. Picks the next they guy. Are, we want the whole yeah. system to be changed, right? Uh, and that's why they they're are that's basically why they, in denial. They don't know what the people want. They think that they can just, uh, yeah. you know, pick names like random names. Like we know you. Right. We are not going to go with this. We want a government of experts, people who know what they're talking about. Technocrats. That's what we want. Right. So we don't want you anymore. So, but are they? Are, 
I mean, there's a lot of politically, you know, economically savvy uh, people in Lebanon, like way yes. more than the politicians that we have right now. Absolutely. But, but so the amount of expertise that is needed are there. It's just the people that the useless people um, have managed to, you know, it, it's it's very family based also, isn't it? Like these are people that have always been in power Even they inherit. They, didn't, they inherit. They the inherit the right. the power. Right. Like they, yeah, they they prepare their children right. to inherit a seat in the parliament, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm telling you, it's not yeah. about politics. It's about changing the whole system. We right. don't want that anymore. Power is not something you inherit. It should be based on merit. But what are the chances of this actually happening? Because um, if there is a vacuum. This is what I worry about. When there, yeah. whenever there's a politic, when there, you know, power vacuum, the people with the most guns fill the vacuum. Whenever there's a power vacuum, and, and the people yeah. with the most guns right now is Hezbollah. <laughs> well, so. we are. Yeah, that's why what we're scared of. Right. We're scared of them using their guns against us. You know, right. against my family. My family is with the protesters every day. Uh, my family is a part of the revolution. They go every day to the street. And I'm scared because we don't, I mean, you don't know when they decide to just say, you know, we're fed up with you. We yeah. just want, you know, we want everything back. So they go with their guns, which is very scary. They are the only ones who are organized. They're, they're, it's a military. So it, it's, just, it's very scary. So we don't know when. That's why the, the situation in Lebanon right now, it's very scary economically, socially. You hear about people committing suicide. Uh, economically, there's no dollars. So the situation is so bad. But, you know, um, it's we have a saying that if it doesn't go bigger, it's not going to be smaller. So it should probably explode before we try to build our country again. We can't just go back. We are in a point of no return. We either go forward or we go backwards. We're not going to go backwards. So We're you're like stop. saying burn it all down and start building from the ashes? Absolutely. That's what the people are doing right now, actually. People are fed up. This is not a movement. Like mm -hmm. we are, we want to just destroy like this situation. We don't want you guys anymore. We want a new Lebanon. We want a new country that can rise from the ashes. Okay. Okay. So the two sources of military power is Lebanon's army and Hezbollah. Yes. Um, but compared to Hezbollah, Lebanon's army is, doesn't have much power, right? Like that no, much? No. no. Okay, It does so... not have much power, of course, right. because they don't want him to have much power. Right. So, but here's the thing. You want to tear this whole system down and start building from the ashes, like a new, completely new system. But the people don't have any guns. Hezbollah has a lot of guns. How do you see this? How do you see this playing out? Like, I can't imagine it. Like, like I'm trying to imagine this happening. I mean, Hezbollah is not going to give up. Uh, Iran's government is not going to give up. The reason why Hezbollah has this many guns is because of Ir uh, Iran, Iran's government support. Yeah. So that does that make all the sources of the problems of Hezbollah uh, of Lebanon, uh, Iran's government? And Listen, how I'm it... telling you, I can't find any solution in the near future. Okay, this is a, we're we're not doing this because we know what should be done, or we know that it's a quick solution. We know it's not a quick solution, right. but this should have been done a long time ago, and it's about time. We know it's going to be a long road. We know it's going to be hard. Uh, we're going to lose a lot of people. The economy will, you know, will be at its worst. But I mean, there is no other way. We are on the point of no return. We yeah. can't go back. I don't have any solution, but we, we have to stay in the streets. We have to keep doing this. We have, I mean, we have to fight them with whatever we have, with social media, with words, with voices. We need to scream, we need to cry, we need to do something. This is, this is our only chance. We have nothing else. We don't have any guns. We can't fight them back with guns. So if they go uh, on the streets, we will lose. They will win. But this is our only way. There's no going back. So uh, some people, can, I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? Yes. Uh, some people may say, like, listen, um, without guns, this this protest is not going to get anywhere, right? And 
Hezbollah seems very confident about like, yeah, sure, do your protest. At the end of the day, we're going to stay in power, right? They said so, right? Yeah. Um, and th- what 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 this will do is like the protesters are very concerned about economic issues, and all these protests, what it's going to do is not going to replace the pa- the powers that be. But it's just going to divert investment by foreigners outside of Lebanon because they see the protests. They're like, okay, this is not a good time to invest in Lebanon. So right. it's going to make the economic situation in Lebanon even worse. Yeah. So, so why would you, if you're worried about economics, why, why are you doing this? You're making everything worse. So how would you respond to that? Because we want things to be worse. We want them to feel our pain because you know what? It's not only it's not only the people who are on the streets who are feeling the pain, also politicians, because, uh, you know, they have businesses, uh, they have things going on in Lebanon and it's stopped. Uh, They have you know, they're not working. Uh, They feel hopeless. So we want to push. The people have nothing to lose. We don't have money. Um, we don't have jobs anymore. So we're going to stay on the street. You don't know the power of the people is really like it's amazing what, what people can achieve. I'm not saying I'm not saying that to be a poet or anything. It's not, you know, poetry, but it, it could really happen. I mean, even if Hezbollah go down, you know, with guns, they're not going to kill everybody and just like sit on a throne some it, it doesn't happen anymore you know everybody's seeing what's going on and we put lebanon on the map uh, everyone is you know they look at us and like this is amazing the people you know trying to take things into their own hands again and that's what we're trying to do so what i'm telling you is it's not about politics anymore it's about basic human rights and we want everybody to come together even pro hezbollah people and some of them are starting to realize that, you know what? No, we want to stand with the people. So maybe this movement, like this like uh, peaceful movement can make a difference. We don't know. We're mm. just going to stay there. We don't know. But how could we reach out to Hezbollah supporters and change their mind? Because it's hard. They have it good. Like they are, they, they, yeah. they, their representatives are in power. So why would they be on your side? Actually, they don't have it good because mm. most of them are poor. Yeah, okay. Most of them have no jobs. They go to Syria to fight and they get paid by Hezbollah and Iran. Right. Um, most of them have like a lot of kids that don't go to school. Uh, they don't have good, uh, you know, um, health, health system or education. So they, they need the the same things that we need they're just too scared to admit it because they're scared right. that they're gonna you know um when you leave it's it's exactly like when you left your religion you mm. feel scared like what am i gonna do now am i like nobody's gonna talk to me are they gonna kill me am i excluded my family is not gonna love me anymore so they think about all these things just like us when they're leaving their um you know political party because it's political it's religious it's everything under the same you know party so what we're trying to do is talk to them on social media you see people on facebook like on the streets saying uh on you know tv stations like join us come to us you're part of us you're one of us just leave you want the same things that we want so they are trying to do it but i mean but of course you have the extremists the, that will never let go of, you know, Hezbollah and Iran influence. But there are some good people, some like just normal Lebanese uh, people who want the same thing that we want. So, um, you know, if the when the economy in Lebanon goes down, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Hezbollah might actually benefit from this because people are desperate for jobs and money. And Hezbollah has the jobs because it could recruit them to fight for them or do Hezbollah related work. And people are going to be able to do, you know, are going to be willing to do that for a lot cheaper. And Hezbollah could hire more people and also more people end up becoming dependent on Hezbollah when the economy goes down, right? So a lot of politicians, uh, a lot nice. of politicians suffer, but Hezbollah's source of funds is mainly from outside of Lebanon, right? Right. But I don't see that in the near. I don't see that, you know, uh, happening in Lebanon anytime soon. You know what's going on in Iran right now? Their economy is also bad. 
there is a revolution going on. They can't afford to pay Hezbollah anymore. Exactly. It's going to happen soon. They're going to stop funding. They're going to stop the money from, you know, uh, coming to Hez going to Hezbollah so, because they need money for their own country to yes. suppress their own people, which, you know, it's, but, it's, be, it's happening everywhere in the Middle East, not only actually, Iran. Do you know what's going on in Iraq? So it's everywhere yes. in the Middle East. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so this is why Hezbollah cannot, you know, control Lebanon anymore like it used to do before. Right. So it's actually even more than Iran running out of money. The money that they already have is worth a lot less because of the oh, sanctions on Iran. Yes. The currency, the, the value of Iran's currency, yeah. the real has dropped. Yeah. like a rock like and so with the same money that they have it's harder for them to influence you know yeah. um, and i actually saw iranians protesting saying stop funding hezbollah stop sending money to hezbollah we need that money help us you know so, so one of the most one of the most uh, consistent and favorite chants in in Iran, when people go yes. to protest, is this Nagaze Nalobnan Janam Fadoye Iran. So Nagaze Nalobnan Janam Fadoye Iran. So they say, like, neither neither Gaza, neither Lebanon are lives for Iran. So they're yeah. basically they're telling to their government, stop sending money to Gaza, stop sending money to Lebanon. Focus on your own. Uh, on, yes. on, uh, so basically everybody is like all these protesters are demanding the same yes. thing. And this is why I think there needs to be some cross border unity between the protesters in Iran, Lebanon and Iraq. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think they all are asking for the same thing. But uh, there is there is yeah. there are a lot of people. If you see them holding signs, mm -hmm. we are with you, uh, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, like they're all together in this. Mm -hmm. It's the revolution of the people. I mean, you have no idea. This is the first time in like, I don't know, maybe 100 years that this happened. Right. Everyone is getting together. All religions. You see them in the streets, like people with crosses, atheists. Be, um, women in hijab, even like religious leaders, they're saying enough is enough. We want, you know, we want our country back. We can have all religions living together and non-religious people living with us, but under a secular government. And right. we want you to go away. Hmm. So actually, Lebanon um, was... Is I think one of the only, the only Arab countries that almost had the gay pride parade, right? But then, oh uh, yes, and then they ca got Absolutely. canceled by Hezbollah. One, one, it Absolutely. had it one year, yeah. Go, but so it's well, it. You go on, sorry. Yeah, actually, there are a lot of organizations in Lebanon who work with you know the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. They try to organize a lot of events. I've actually been to many of those events, and they're mostly underground, but not really. Like you have media coverage, but it's mostly like social media and not like um, local TV stations. Right. Uh, but you see them, and it's. Um, People accept them more now. Mm. Um, they try to do a parade. They were successful once or twice. But then it was like a, there's a wave of, you know, people who say like, no, uh, you're an abomination. You don't represent us. We're a religious country. But, you know, they try and try. But, try. of course, it's better than the situation in other Arab countries right. where, like, there's absolutely no way right. of this happening. It just seems to me like Lebanon, Lebanese people are way, way, way more advanced than their government, like way ahead of their government. So like, <sighs> that's absolutely true. And it breaks my heart because we can take over. Right. Like we can make Lebanon a, be a better country. I'm 100, especially women. If women take over, let me tell you, Lebanese women are fierce. They're strong. They're educated. They know what they're doing. Like you see them on the street. They're organizing everything. They're right. actually, they're organizing the whole revolution. They they do it. They're doing like a GoFundMe page for each and every organization going now, like to feed uh, people who go uh, on the streets feed the hungry, uh, help people like who have got like their cars, you know, burnt. Uh, mm. They're doing, it's all made by women. And it's driving me crazy. Like we don't, we have like maybe four or five women in the parliament right now, which is insane. Out of like 150 or I don't know how many. So we need more women in the government, more women in the parliament.
Right. E equal opportunity, right? Uh, yes. And I noticed that it's the same thing about like leadership, like leading a protest. There seems to be um, a lot of women in Iran as well. And I think the reason for that is because they are they are one of the most influenced. Right. You know, absolutely. so it's, it's, a, it's basically a reaction to them being a target all the time. Right. Yes, absolutely. Right. So um, I don't know if, if you saw, but the con Iran's consulate in Najaf, okay, yeah, not not the embassy in Baghdad, because Najaf, by the way, is a city in Iraq for right, people yeah, who don't yeah. know. Uh, not the the embassy in Baghdad is way more secure, but the but the consulate in Najaf was just recently burned down by protesters in Iraq, right? Twice in a week, twice in a week, right? Um, and last year, um, Iran's consulate in Karbala was also attacked. To, yeah. Which should, I mean, shows a lot of protesters are tired of Iran's Iran's government's influence yeah. in their country. Are people in Lebanon direct mentioning at all, directly mentioning Iran's government at all, or is it just has we focus on Hezbollah? So the influence of the Iranian government in Iraq is way worse than mm. Lebanon. 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 I mean, I'm like, it's, I don't know why Iraqi people, like, it's beyond me. They should have done <laughs> something before. Like, it's unbelievable. Can you imagine, like, a, a foreign uh, country just, like, owning everything in your country and, like, having all the political, economic, social influence? They're trying to change, right. you know, the way... Iraq is, uh, but in um, what you're talking about, like in Lebanon, um, yes, people are protesting. They're saying that we don't want any Iranian influence. We don't want any Saudi influence. We don't even want American influence. We want to try for once to mm. build our own country. Maybe we will succeed. Maybe we'll get together. We don't know. Maybe we'll make, you know, a better future for us and our kids. Um, but we don't want any other influence. That what what's we what we are trying to do. But but uh, yeah. Well, the reason why Iran's government has been more of a hold on Iraq is first of all Shia uh, the Shia percentage of Iraq oh, is much that's higher. True. That's and true. And all and also because I Iran's government has worked on building its network in Iraq even before the fall of Saddam. Yeah. Right? They had, and they're they, neighbors, aren't they? Yes, they're neighbors. Yeah. Right. But 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 what's interesting to me is like um, Hezbollah in Lebanon is more open about its being a proxy of Iran's government. Absolutely. Like the politicians in Iraq is like kind of hush hush about how much yes. Iran how much Iran's government picks and chooses the politicians. But Nasrallah just comes out like yes, we get money from Iran uh, and as the, the as long as Iran's government yeah. is doing good, we're doing good. Like he's like he, he says it out loud. He says yeah. that like they're not even hiding it. <laughs> he says a lot about like, do you know Wilayat al faqih Yes. You know, yeah. It's, so yeah. he is part of it. And yeah. the, the, I mean, they're, uh, they want to, they want Lebanon to become a part of it too, but they're not going to succeed in doing that because Lebanon is different than Iraq and we have different sects and, you know, right. uh, Lebanese people are more liberal and they understand the game. They know what's going on. So right. it's not going to happen and they're not going to succeed in doing that. And it's not going to be part of Wilayat al faqih right. anytime right. soon. Uh, for, for people that don't know, is like the religious guardian of the jurist, the, the religious authority um, that rules over uh, Iran. Um, and what the what Hezbollah wants it wants that they want to be part of that. Yes. They have the, have that Absolutely. religious authority. And you're saying that's not going to happen because of because of Lebanon's is more diverse. It's unique. It's unique. different. It's more diverse. Right. Um, so yeah, in Iraq, I understand. You know the fear. Uh, but in Lebanon, it's absolutely not going to happen. Okay, so how could we so, how could we uh, support this? How could people that are oh not goodness. support yes. the protests? Yeah, okay. Talk about it more. Uh, go to you know um, go on Twitter. Uh, go to the hashtag Lebanese Revolution or Thawra fi Lebanon, Thawra Lebanonia, Lebanon fi Thawra. So there are a lot of hashtags going on on Twitter, on Facebook regarding the Lebanese Revolution. Go uh, and support us. Retweet. You know. Um, you know, the social media is like, it's an amazing place. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, the, I, I think that uh, we succeeded as a revolution 
due to and because of social media, because of what's going on, because of the hashtags, because people can uh, just um, gather and like, hey, let's meet in this place. And they send messages to each other and they go meet in the, and like, it's amazing. So we can do that, that you can support us through social media and go the GoFundMe pages posted also on social media to help the Lebanese people and all of that. Can you send me the hashtags on Facebook once the call is over? I'll include Absolutely. them in the I'll yes, include them yeah. in the description. And you're right. I mean, the the protesters have achieved more than the protesters in Iraq and uh, in Iran. E- even though it's not enough. I mean, in I, actually in Iraq also there's a resignation, but in Ira- uh, in Iran so far no, nothing has happened. But you, I mean, the Le- the Lebanese protesters managed to take down the prime minister, right? The prime yes. minister resigned. Yes. But and I, but has the protests died down a little bit since the prime minister resigned, or is it the same, or is it increasing? Because the, I think the hope of the politicians was like, let's sacrifice the prime minister, and yeah. maybe the protesters will go home. They didn't okay, go so home. So the protest, <laughs> protesters did not go home. Absolutely, right. they're still in the streets. Right. Uh, it's everything is still, you know, the way it was. Day one. Uh, the only problem is the economic situation is getting worse and worse. Mm. So you know when you don't have money, when you can't feed your kids, when mm. you can't, you know, get simple things, you get frustrated. So you try to uh, get to your basic needs first before you know doing anything else. So what's going on right now is a struggle. Like we want to continue, but also we don't want to, you know, we don't want to die as a country. We don't want, you know, mm-hmm. and people are committing suicide. And that's like, this is the first because of the, because they're losing jobs because of their economic situation. So also we're struggling on so many levels. So it's not only politics, um, you know, politics, it's also economic, it's also social, it's also electricity. We need like to, electricity 24 seven and we don't have that. And that's insane. Yeah, it's so sad because, uh, you know, if there's one Arab country like uh, that kind of have like Tunisia like potential yeah. is the Lebanese people and they're being taken, you know, they, there's a they're being slowed down by the government. But there's so much potential in the Lebanese people that if they just had the freedom and the rights and the ability to tap into all that talent and all that forward thinking and all that open mindedness, if you could just tap into that, Lebanon had a lot of potential to be way Absolutely. ahead of uh, other countries. So, Absolutely. And, and, so yeah, and, and actually the, at, people think like, oh, Twitter activism, this is not that big of a deal. But it is important because if the the reason why protesters will come out is because they're seeing, they would see that if they're being taken seriously yes. from internationally, right? And yeah. if the, it, they will, they will their, their revolutions dies when eyeballs go towards a different direction right so if you if you want to just you know think like oh twitter activism or youtube activism or facebook activism doesn't work you're completely wrong we have seen time and time and again if more people start tweeting about it using the hashtags paying attention yes then it will encourage the people to continue right because they see like they're being actually The influencers and the activists on social media, they are the shakers of this revolution. Right. They are, you know, they are uh, because now the government cannot lie. They cannot just post pictures and pretend it's from the revolution. Now we have phones, we have cameras, we have Internet. Now the influencers who have a lot of followers can take pictures, can take videos and post them on social media. And a lot of people will see it. Nobody can deny it. This is the truth. This is what's going on. So they are actually the shakers and the movers of this revolution. Uh, the activists, the influencers on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, they are helping a lot. Right. So let me let me give you a, a, a almost one, you know, 100 percent guaranteed proof on how important yes. the, the social media activism is. Right. So when the Lebanese protests happened, mm-hmm. it got attention. It, it went on the news. It got a lot of attention yes. on international news, right? Then when the Iraqi protesters protests also happened, it got a lot of attention on international news, right? But then when the Iranian right. protests happened, it didn't get no attention. Nobody's you talking about it. I don't see you know it what? on the news. I, I'll tell you why. Even though from the three after the Islamic Revolution of 1979, 
there was this was the third protest, right? Mm -hmm. And this was the worst, the biggest one. Both yeah. in, when it comes to number of people and the number of cities that were involved and the re reaction of the government, the number of people killed in the street was the highest. And it got the least attention, even compared to last year, to 2018. Right. This one got less attention, even though it was bigger. You know why? Because the government shut down the Internet. Absolutely. The government shut yes. down the Internet within 24 hours and they kept it shut down for a week. And look at the result. The result was not only it didn't get social media attention, it didn't get even news coverage yeah. compared to those other protests. So and you know, during because the government week, knows the importance yes. of, of social media activism. Yes. And now we only see what they want us to see. Right. We don't see the truth. You know, during that week, there was a lot of killing. There yes. was a lot of people who were thrown in jail. They did a lot of things that nobody talked about because nobody knew about and, it. And now it's too... Now, you know, they know the news. If it's if it's one week after, even if it comes out now, because the videos are right. coming out now, it's yeah. too late. It's, it's, it's last week's news. So it's not going to get attention. So they just... But you know what? I have faith in the Iranian people. I know that they're going to be able to do it again. They're resilient. I mean, they can do anything. And now I think they're fed up. Mm. The, and they're seeing everything changing around them in the Middle East. They see the revolutions. They see Tunisia. They see what's going, what went on in Egypt. They see Lebanon. Like, we want this. Right. We want to change, too. Women want their rights, too, you know. So I, I see it happening. I don't know if it's going to be soon, but I see it happening somehow. Right. So, uh, yeah, but, but the, the, the interesting point is that the, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping it will continue. But the fact that this didn't get any attention, um, yes. much attention, to me shows how important social media activism is, right? Absolutely. You know, it's because you can see the difference between the protests of Iraq and Lebanon comparing it to Iran. Yeah. The, the, the only difference was like they shut down the Internet. And I mean, the, the reason why the Lebanese revolution is successful is absolutely 100 percent because of social media influencers right. and activists who are, you know, letting us know who are taking pictures and videos and showing us what's going on. So what let me know what you think about this. I, I kind of think that this might might become kind of like what happened in Europe in the 1800s. Okay, so you had you had oh, three right. you had a three step process. I think we're going through an age of enlightenment in the Middle East and North Africa, right? And I think it's a you had you had the three step process. You had the initial thinkers and philosophers coming yes. up and suggesting enlightenment more enlightenment way of life, right? Which we had that in Europe. But then we didn't get that right away in Europe. We had we went through a bloody period, like a French Revolution. So many heads being chopped off. You didn't get you, you didn't get enlightenment. You actually got a lot more a lot of chaos. Yes. But then after that died down, then those ideas still those ideas remained, and Absolutely. all of a sudden Europe went through an age of enlightenment. Yes. A couple of years after the ideas were introduced, right? So I think we and might be going through the is, same three. Yeah. Yes. And the proof is on the streets of Lebanon, when you right. see all of these people getting together, it never happened before, like Muslims and Christians saying that we want the same things and we are, you know, fed up. This is, this is enlightenment. Like this is edit, enlightenment, edit, but like it never happened. And people are just, they're hugging each other. They're crying. They're saying, this is long overdue. We should have done this before. We are brothers. We are sisters. We live in the same country. We should, they divided us. They, mm -hmm. because they, they want to divide us so they can use this for their own political gain. They are happy to see us divided. They want us to hate each other while they do their own, you know, business together under the table. So what you see now is absolutely a revolution and enlightenment. I mean, it's it's beautiful. Right. So this could be the beginning of an age of enlightenment in yes. the Middle East and in North Africa. Yes. And you could be part of it by sharing these stories, talking about yes. it. And again, this does matter because, again, if the more attention people, uh, the more attention this gets, the more it will continue, the, the faster 
it will raise the, yes. the more meat the more traditional media will notice what the, because t- I can tell you traditional mainstream media looks at the hashtags that are trending to decide the news that they cover right so your activism might actually end up encouraging traditional media to also cover these stories yes. so yeah you know, again you know you could, if, if you want to get even more if you okay, if you you know the least you could do is just share these stories share this video for example yes. but the more the most you could do is actually write to your politicians right right yeah. to your you know congressmen or women and be like hey what are you doing if, you know uh to you know support the lebanese protesters are you t- I, I can you at least make a statement you, you know the same way that the you know the hong kong protests are getting a lot of attention oh, yeah. and the politicians are coming out and saying like oh we you know free hong kong we we you know we don't you know at least there's the politicians are saying taking a position against chinese government uh, but they're not doing that when it comes to, uh, you know, Lebanon, Iran, or Iraq. We need to encourage the politicians to take a stand because it does matter. You think like, oh, Iraq doesn't care, um, right. or Lebanon's going. But you know what the problem care. is? Yeah. Because they would accuse them of uh, interfering in foreign uh-huh. countries. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, uh, America now is interfering. Yeah. There's an American influence versus Iranian influence. So you know what? But they That's say that why- anyways. They say say that yeah. they say Later. that regardless right because br- right now for example iran's government is saying that all of these protesters in iraq lebanon and iran are either israeli or u.s uh, backed you know so yeah. even without the united states saying anything they're already saying that so yeah, absolutely so you might as well go out and support actually them. they're saying that they are financing the revolution yeah. while if there's no money right people are poor they're barely eating right now and they're saying that America is fine. Where is the money? Like, I want my part if they're financing. I want my family to get some money. Right. It's just lies, you know. Um, they want to tell, I mean, it's all Hezbollah propaganda. So, and a lot of people from the United States or other, I mean, European countries might be like, oh, but we don't want our country to intervene in other countries. Right. But, yeah. but, 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 but. I hear that all the time. But what, what I'm suggesting is like influencing these com- countries by actually le- interfering less, not by, I'm not, we're not asking for military invitation. We're asking, for example, Lebanon gets AIDS fr- uh, from um, United States, right? Yeah. They could make that AIDS conditional. Mm-hmm. All right. They were like, okay, you're not treating your people. This is not a government representative of, of your people. And we're going to remove the say, <laughs> right? I, I don't know. know. Do you think that would be helpful? Um. Now, I think it won't be helpful because, um, like I told you, they are using this pretext to say um, other foreign countries are interfering. Nope. And we want them to know that they are not. But, but the aid is interfering. So the United States is like, could be like, okay, you want right. us to interfere? Well, okay, then let's, here's the aid. Yeah. We'll remove the aid. This is less. In, it's less intervention. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm, what I'm telling you is the problem with with foreign interference is it's not only from Iran or from Saudi Arabia. It's from all over, and we want to just try just, to tell them that it's I just, different. This time. I just think it's so ironic to say like stop interfering by continuing to give us I aid. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, what can, what yeah. can I tell you? This is, yeah. this is the Middle East. Yeah, it is. Anyways, Pamela, that I took uh, this it's almost an hour now, so I t- took a lot of your time. Um, <laughs> please, please co- come in again and yes, in, uh, explain yes, yes. stuff to us. Yeah, again. And it's by the way, fun to talk to you. Yeah, I hope you get your Twitter account back. Let me let us know hope if so. we can do something to help. Let I know. know. I mean. Yeah, let's hope. I don't know. I'm still waiting, but yeah, let us, let me message me if I can do anything to help get it back. Okay. And, and people, I can't link to your Twitter account, so I'll just link to your YouTube account in the description yes. to to Atheist Republic's Arabic YouTube channel, yes. uh, um El Had, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, t- t- take a look. El-Had. At- and I will definitely send you the hashtags for the Lebanese Revolution. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going right. to stop recording. Thank Wait. You. Don't go anywhere.